Western hegemony insists on dividing the world between often seemingly competing religions. So we're told that Thailand is Buddhist, and indeed 85 to 95 percent of the population identifies as Theravada Buddhist. The Buddhist clergy, the Sangha, consists of two main schools of Theravada Buddhism. The <coughs> Uh, Mahanikaya and the Dharma Yukatika. The former is older and more prevalent within monastic community. Uh, But is is this the full picture? If you take the tourist ferry on the Chao Praya River in Bangkok, you reach the temple complexes. Uh, but along the way we're reminded of the Chinese and Vietnamese populations are either Mahayana or Theravada, uh, Theravada Buddhists. You first reach the Wat Aran uh, Ratacharam, Raram, the Temple of Dawn. Wat Aran is an ancient temple dating back to the Ayutthaya period and considered as the royal temple of King Rama III, also known as King Buddha Laleta Baha Alia um, of the Chakri dynasty. A Buddhist temple has existed on the site of Wat Aran since the time of the um, Ayutthaya kingdom. It's believed that Taskin vowed to restore the temple after passing it at dawn. The temple enshrined the Emerald Buddha image before it was transferred to Wat Prara Kau on the river's opposite bank in 1784. Wat Aran gets his name from Aruna, the Hindu god of dawn, hence its common name, the Temple of Dawn. Uh, The main feature of Wat Aran is is its central prang, which is encrusted with colourful porcelain. Uh, This is interpreted as stupor-like pagoda encrusted with coloured fiance. The central prang symbol of Mount Meru of the Hindu cosmology, the satellite prang are devoted to the wind god Prafia. The demons Yaksha at the entrance of the Ubushot are from the Ramaykan, uh, very similar to the Ramayana. The white figure is named the Sasadasia, and the green one is known as Thoksakan, or the demon Ravana, from the Ramayana. Uh, the main Golden Buddha statue is believed to have been designed by King Rama II. On the other side of the river, and a short ferry f- ride, you'll find Wat Prara, Chetupon, Wimon, Mangakalaram, uh, Matacharam, <laughs> uh, Hawian, or Watpo complex. Uh, the date of construction of the old temple and its founder are unknown, but it's thought to have been built or expanded during the reign of King Pratachara, 1688 to 1703. The southern section of Wat Pro used to be occupied by part of the French star fort that was demolished by King Pratachara after the 1688 siege of Bangkok. After the fall of the Ayutthaya in 1767 to the Burmese, King Taskin moved the capital to Thonburi, where he located his palace beside Wat Aran on the opposite side of the Chao Prara River from the Wat Pro. The proximity of Wat Pho to the royal palace elevated it to the status of being a Wat Luang, a royal monastery. Theravada is the most commonly accepted name of Buddhism's oldest existing school. The school's adherents, termed Theravadins, have preserved their version of Gautama Buddha's teaching, or Buddha Dharma, in the Pali Canon for over two millennia. The Pali Kalam is the most complete Buddhist canon, surviving in the classical Indian language of Pali, which serves as the school's sacred language and lingua franca. 
In contrast to Majorana and Viriana, Theravada tends to be conservative in matters of doctrine, prayati and monastic discipline, Vianana. One element of this conservatism is the fact that Theravada rejects the authenticity of Mahayana status, which appeared in the 1st century BCE onwards. Modern Theravada derives from Maharavi order, a Sri Lankan branch of the Vibhajavada tradition, which in turn a sect of the Indian Kshatrivara Nikaya. This tradition began to establish itself in Sri Lanka from the 3rd century BCE onwards. From Sri Lanka, the Theravada Mahayana tradition subsequently spread to the rest of Southeast Asia. It's the official religion of Sri Lanka, Myanmar and Cambodia, and the dominant religion in Laos and Thailand, and is practiced by minorities in India, Bangladesh, China, Nepal, North Korea and Vietnam. During the modern era, new developments have incorporated Buddhist modernism. The uh, Vipassana movement, which reinvigorated Theravada meditation, practiced the growth of the Thai forest tradition, which re-emphasizes forest monasticism, and it encouraged the spread of Theravada westward. The Wat and the reclining Buddha, Pra Buddhasaya Sas, were built by Rama III in 1832. The statue of the reclining Buddha represents the entry of Buddha into Nirvana and the end of all reincarnations, samsara. The posture of the image is referred to as Sisayasaya, the posture of the sleeping or reclining lion. The figure is 15 metres high and 46 metres long. It's one of the largest Buddhist statues in Thailand. The figure has a brick core which was modelled and shaped with plaster, then gilded. The right arm of the Buddha supports the head with tight curls, which rests on two box pillows encrusted with glass mosaics. The soles of the feet of the Buddha are 3 metres high and 4.5 metres long and inlaid with mother and pearl. They are each divided into 108 arranged panels displaying the auspicious symbols by which Buddha can be identified, such as flowers, dancers, white elephants, tigers and altar accessories. At the centre of each foot is a circle representing the chakra or energy point. Beliefs of Theravada Buddhism include a doctrine of karma or action, which is based on intention, satana, and related to a doctrine of rebirth, which holds that after death sentient beings are not fully awake will trans-migrate uh, to another body, possibly in another realm of existence. The other realm, one which will is be reborn in, is determined by the person's past karma. Uh, the cyclical universe filled with birth and death is named samsara. Uh, the rejection of other doctrines and practices found in the Brahmical Hinduism, including the idea of the Vedas are a divine authority, any form of sacrifices to the gods, including animal sacrifices and ritual purification by bathing, are considered useless and spiritually corrupted. The Pali texts also reject the idea of castes as being divinely obtained. There are 108 bronze balls in the corridor to the reclining Buddha, representing 108 auspicious characters of Buddhas. Visitors may drop coins in these balls, it is believed to bring good fortune. A set of major teachings called the Bodhahipakaya Dhyaka Dharma, factors conducive to uh, awakening. Descriptions of various meditative practices or states, namely the four jahanas, meditative ab absorptions, and the formless dimensions, Araputanya. Ethical training, Silla, including the ten courses of wholesome action and the five precepts. Nirvana, Pali Nirvana, the highest good and the final goal in Theravada Buddhism. It is complete and final end of suffering, a state of perfection. It's also the end of all rebirth, but it's not an annihilation, Ucheda. The corruption or influences as Vardas, such as the corruption of sensual pleasures, Kamsavar, uh, existence corruption, Basavar 
and the ignorance corruption, uh, Ajivasava, the doctrine of impermanence, Anakia, uh, which holds that all physical and mental phenomena are transient, unstable and inconstant. Uh, the doctrine of non-self, Atana, which holds that the constituents of the person namely the five aggregates, physical form, feelings, perceptions, intentions and consciousness, are empty of self, atta, since they are impermanent and not always under our control. The five hindrances, pancha niravana, are obstacles to meditation, one, sense, desire, two, hostility, three, sloth and turpal, four, restlessness and worry, and five, doubt. Uh, the four abodes, Brahmavara, are known as the four immeasurable, Apanayana, Manana. The four noble truths which state in belief, there is a dukkha, suffering, unease. Two, there is the causes of dukkha, mainly craving, Tahana. The removal of craving leads to the end, Niradora, of suffering. And there is a path, a marga, to follow to bring this about. The framework of dependent actions, Patichamapada, which explains how suffering arises, beginning with ignorance and ending in birth, old age and death, and how suffering is brought to an end. The middle way, which is seen as having two facets, first is the middle path between the extreme asceticism and sensual indulgence. It's seen as a middle view between the idea that death beings are annihilated and the idea that there is an eternal self, Paliata. <coughs> the Noble Eightfold Path, one of the main outlets of the Buddhist path, to awakening. Uh, the eight factors are right view, right intention, right speak, right conduct, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right samadhi. Close by Watfo is the Grand Palace. The Grand Palace has been the official residence of the kings of Siam and later Thailand since 1782. The king's court and royal government were based on the grounds of the palace until 1925. King Bumahibol Adulayaj Rama IX resided in the Trat uh, Chitralanda royal villa and his successor, King Vera Kalorongkorn Rama the Tenth in the Amphora and Saturn residential hall, both in the Dusit Palace, uh, but the Grand Palace is still used for official events. The Temple of the Emerald Buddha, or Wat Pra Kau, is now in the Royal Chapel, situated within the walls of the palace. Incorrectly referred to as a Buddhist temple, it is in fact a chapel. It has all the features of a temple, except for the living quarters for the monks. Uh, built in 1783, the temple was constructed in accordance with royal ancient tradition, dating back to Wat Mahathat, a royal chapel within the grounds of the palace at the Sukhan Hotai and Wat Pra Si Samphet Aratana. The famed Emerald Buddha is kept within the grounds of the temple. In these next clips, we'll see the lion dance from the Chinese tradition, which predates Buddhism, although it's been incorporated into Buddhist traditions. This was filmed during the Western New Year, and it's more although it's more associated with the Chinese New Year. The tradition itself, however, is practiced throughout Southeast Asia. The Chinese lion dance is normally operated by two dancers, one of whom manipulates the head while the other forms the rear end of the lion. Chinese lion dance fundamental movements can be found in the Chinese martial arts and is commonly performed to a vigorous drum beat, as you will hear. Interestingly, the lion dance Ryog is also performed near my home in Java at Ponorogo. Oh, whilst it may be influenced by Chinese tradition, it is believed to be authentically J Javanese. Nevertheless, the origins and cultural ownership of Ryok dance have been the subject of dispute and controversy with Malaysia. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Some 5 to 10% of Thais are Muslim. Islam is the dominant religion in three of the four southernmost provinces uh, Nathri, Iwatu, Yala, and Patani, all near the Malaysian border. Despite southern Thailand having been ruled by the Srivijaya Empire from Sumatra, this was actually a Buddhist empire, and so if it did influence southern Thailand, it was through a common Malay culture. Uh, most Muslims there are ethnic Malay, uh, but the Muslim population nationwide also includes descendants from immigrants from other parts of Southeast Asia, China, Cambodia and Indonesia, as well as ethnic Thai themselves. Uh, the Javanese mosque, Indonesia Masjid, is a mosque located in central Bangkok. This mosque is called the Javanese Mosque because it was founded by the Javanese in Bangkok. The mosque was built on Wafak land owned by Haji Muhammad Salah, a Javanese immigrant in 1906. Uh, the mosque has a Javanese architecture with light green building colour with a pyramid roof and three steps. Not unlike the great Kuaman Mosque in Yogyakarta or Jogja, although in miniature of course. Indeed it is adopted by Nahadalatu. Ulama Enu community from Indonesia. Uh, the main building of the mosque is rectangular measuring 12 by 12 meters with four pillars in the middle as support. In addition to the Qibla direction on the other three sides there are wooden doors on each. Outside the main building there is a foyer with four doors made of iron bars. At the front the mirbar there is a wooden pulpit equipped with stairs. On the right and left there are two clock 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 bells also made of welt wood. Being a part of Enu, the traditions were familiar to me, uh, but whilst the prayers were conducted in Arabic, I was a little surprised to find the hot bar delivered in Thai. Also, none of the fellow worshippers appeared to speak Bahasa Indonesia, but as the Javanese were only brought to Bangkok by the Japanese, Japanese during World War II, most Javanese then, at that time, would not be able to speak Bahasa Indonesia. In common with Southeast Asia, most Buddhists incorporate Hindu and animistic practices into their worship. Although Thailand has never been a Hindu country, it's been influenced by Hinduism. Before Thailand was a country itself, in the past the nation was influenced by Indian culture through the maritime trade. For example, the popular epic Ramekan is based on, on the Buddhist Dasha Jataka, uh, Jataka and is very similar to the Ramayana. The royal emblem of Thailand depicts Garuda, the Vahanu vehicle of Vishnu. In this clip we see the shrine devoted to Trimurti. Trimurti are the three powers of Brahman, Sanghang Widhi, as God is called in Hinduism. In creating and maintaining, protecting nature and its contents, the three faces being Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. Trimurti is also found in Indonesia, especially in Bali. Although the Prambanam temple in Yogyakarta, Jogja, is a Trimurti, 
with, a, with from left to right the Brahma temple, the Shiva temple and the Vishnu temple. Generally these shrines are actually spirit houses. A spirit house is a shrine to the protective spirit of the place. It is found across Southeast Asian countries including Burma, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam and the Philippines. The spirit house is normally in the form of a small roof structure and is mounted on a pillar or a dais. They can range in size from small platforms to houses large enough for people to enter. Spirit houses are intended to provide shelter for spirits that might cause problems for the people if not appeased. The shrines often include images or carved statues of people and animals. Now this has great resonance with me as I find spirits to be fascinating with such statues, even with dolls. Offerings are left at the house to uh, appropriate the spirits. Very commonly this will include a bottle of fizzy drink with a straw in it. And more elaborate installations include an altar for this purpose. Uh, this is the very similar to the way my Chinese and Batawi neighbours leave food and drink for ghosts around our home in Jakarta. Uh, but as we know, this simply attracts spirits. Almost all houses, malls, apartments and office blocks will have a spirit house outside. The idea being that if the spirits are entertained in the house, they will not move into the main building. It's common to find statues of animals around the spirits' houses. Uh, these often relate to the Thai or Chinese zodiac signs. However, nobody really knows why zebras can also be found. Although it's hypothesised that the zebra represents a zebra crossing. And this is to placate those who have died in a, in a road accident. When I spotted the statue of Ganesh or Ganesha... I believed it to be indicative of Tantrism, but Tantra is not common in Thailand, them being Theravada Buddhists. It is simply another reference to the influence of Hinduism on their beliefs. That's not to say that Thais do not practice mysticism and magic, but that it is not influenced directly by Tantric practices. Interestingly, these spirit houses are found on Soy Arab, despite there being numerous mosques in the area, a feature which I actually found very comforting. In common with Indonesia, trees are also believed to contain the spirits and offerings are placed around them, as is very common in Bali. Old trees are therefore preserved with modern buildings having to be built around them. Uh, this appears to have more resonance with an animistic past which has been incorporated into Buddhism in the same way that Kajawan incorporates animism within Islam in Java. Tantra is a ge geometric diagram, mainly from the Tantric tradition of the Indian religions. Yantras are used for the worship of deities in temples or at home, as an aid in meditation, used for the benefits given by the supposed occult powers based on Hindu astrology and tantric texts. They are also used for the adornment of temple floors due mainly to their ascetic and system symmetrical qualities. Specific yantras are traditionally associated with specific deities and or certain types of energies used for accomplishment of certain tasks, vows that may be materialistic or spiritual in nature. Yantras hold great importance <coughs> within Hinduism, Jainism, but also Buddhism. Uh, what should be apparent is that there are huge similarities between Javanese Kajawan and Thai Buddhism, a point that was completely lost on a drunken Australian who seemed to want to fight with me at Chequers Bar on Nana. He seemed to believe that as a Javanese Muslim I was personally responsible for the Bali bombing. Undoubtedly I was also responsible for the atrocities in New York and uh, personally was involved in the barbaric executions of people in Saudi Arabia. Oh, and also that I insist that my wife wears a uh, hijab 
all the time, even though she was sitting next to me without one. Uh, despite, and, and as I say, he seemed to think I was personally responsible for the barley bombings, despite the combined deaths of Indonesians and British, nearly equally those of the Australians. <laughs> Not far from the Grand Palace is the Amulet Market. Again, the parallels with Indonesian Jimat are overwhelming. Now, I'm no expert on Thai amulets, and if you're interested in them, and indeed Thai mysticism in general, you should really check out my fellow Mancunian, Jenks, who really is an expert. A Thai Buddha amulet often refers to an academically votile tablet. It's a type of Thai Buddhist, uh, Buddhist blessed item. <coughs> it's generally created to raise funds to help temple operations. A Thai Buddhist monk will give an amulet to Buddhists as a gift after they donate money or offerings to a temple. The amulets are then no longer considered a gift but a tool to enhance luck in different aspects of life. Local people also use amulets to improve their marriage, wealth, health, love and relationships. It, it, is, it is a Thai tradition to place am amulets under a stupa or other temple structures during its construction. When a structure collapses, many amulets can be found, with some amulets being centuries old. Almost every Thai Buddhist has at least one amulet. It's common to see both young and elderly wear at least one amulet around their neck in order to feel closer to Buddha. Amulets are made often using Buddha's image, an image of a famous monk or even an image of the monks who made the amulets. They can vary in shape and size and materials used such as plaster, bone, wood or metal. They can include ash from incense or old temple structures or hair from a famous monk to add protective powers to the amulets. After the amulets are made, the maker will ask the monks who, <coughs> who live in the temple, or monks from other temples, to congregate in order to chant, pray and bless these amulets. This process can take anywhere from a week to more than three years to complete. Uh, when a new amulet is freshly made from plaster, its raw appearance may not be very attractive. Uh, by adding a protective case in the appearance of the amulet is enhanced and at the same time the amulet inside is protected. The price of the amulet not only depends on its appearance but also its scarcity, its maker, its age and its divine powers. It's believed that these old amulets made by monks are the most powerful and that those sold in the market are mass produced. Most people even call them fake. Uh, whilst this is somewhat true, I know that all objects can be activated by anyone with some spiritual powers. I'm also somewhat sceptical about them being encased in plastic, as this could prevent the energy from being released. The traditions for amulets are do not wear Buddhist amulets under the waist. Uh, for, most, for most amulets, wear, wear it on the neck or above the, the waist. This tradition is to show respect to the Buddha. Tak roots, these are the long thin ones, another type of amulet made in Thailand, uh, but without a monk or Buddhist image, can be put inside the pant pockets. These are often long and thin, encased in a tube. Do not put a Buddhist amulet in a bedroom if you expect to engage in sexual activity there. Pray before and after wearing an amulet and remove amulets when bathing. At the market I came across many amulets which were clearly of animistic origin and had little to do with Buddhism. Again this is similar to Javanese Jimat, including the Palak Kik, a kind of Thai amulet in the shape of a penis. The phrase Palak Kik means honourable or surrogate penis. These amulets range from a few inches to several feet in length. The smaller versions are usually worn on the body, whilst the larger versions are displayed in shops and other establishments. And the Gumanthong, the golden baby, 
although this is somewhat incorporated into Buddhist tradition, I believe this to serve a similar purpose to a toil in Indonesia and is used to steal wealth for the owner. Returning to Theavadra Buddhism, the practice of taking refuge in the Triple Gems, the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, the seven aids to awakening, the Sata Bojanga, mindfulness, Sati, investigation, Dharma, Vichara, energy, Viriyaya, bliss, pity, relaxation, Pasadhi, Samadhi and equanimity, Upecha. Uh, the six senses, salatayana and corresponding theory of sense, impression, farsa and consciousness, vijnana, various frameworks for the practice of mindfulness, sati, mainly the four satipatthanas, establishment of mindfulness, and the sixteen elements of apananasti, mindfulness of breathing. Again, the parallels with kajawa are just immense. Uh, what should be apparent is that there exists a common philosophy or religious tradition across Southeast Asia. Nevertheless, an event happened in Bangkok which completely shocked me. Uh, those of you who have been following my channel will know that my immediate family and I have been suffering from the effects of black magic for over 10 years. Whilst our neighbours in Jakarta have certainly targeted us, it has become increasingly apparent that my duke and brother-in-law is behind so many of the problems the rest of the family have been facing. Certainly the duke and brother-in-law follows a tantric left-handed path. Whilst this can be traced to the Hindu Buddhist tradition of the Majapahit Empire, in Java this is most often more associated with the Buddhist tradition. More recently I have come to realise that the main problem is intergenerational karma. Almost certainly this is related to a pact with spirits, a jinn if you like, entered into by my, my wife's ancestors. You may like to see this as a marriage to a jinn, but I believe that even this is a metaphor for allowing oneself to be a possessed by a spirit to avoid samsara as is the tantric tradition. I now believe that this is what the duke and brother-in-law has done uh, but he is also attempting to control events via his left-handed practices. Do you remember the golden Buddha at Wat Aram complex? Uh, well my wife entered the when my wife entered the Vihara she was overcome with emotions, breaking down in tears. She was filled with the light of love and bliss that I have described in other vlogs, but especially in relation to the philosopher Shiharawadi. I believe that the karma is now o over, as my wife has found a Buddhist tradition not connected to Tantra. It was as though she was being welcomed back to the beliefs of her ancestors, just as Samar reminds the Javanese to do. I'm not suggesting for one minute that my wife will abandon her Islamic obligations, nor indeed her Muslim religion, but will certainly take more interest in Buddhist philosophy. I also anticipate a gradual ending to the problems her family have endured. Indeed, what has happened is all a part of a divination I have had uh, that my wife will eventually find the solution to this intergenerational karma.